Hello again. Let's talk about one of the most often mentioned benefit of the digitization of teaching and learning, the digital content. There are several areas where digital content can be superior to traditional content using pen and paper or chalk and blackboard. In this video I will focus on multimedia techniques, that is content that not only integrates all facets of media from print to video, but also involves a certain amount of interactivity. Such an example from my subject is the presentation of diphthongs. Do you know what diphthongs are? Here is a definition presented in one of our videos. Diphthongs are vowels that undergo considerable change of quality during pronunciation. Let us illustrate the articulation of a diphthong. Here is the diphthong ow. 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 Its starting point is a, ah, and then we gradually glide into u. So diphthongs consist of an onset, that is the first element of a diphthong, and an offset, the final element. Both onset and offset are linked by a glide. You may already feel that this short video explanation is superior to a traditional paper-based explanation. In fact, I would fully subscribe to that, but I will tell you more about the role of video in another electronic lecture. But let's now look at the diphthongs of a particular language. In English, as spoken in England, for example, we have eight such diphthongs. Since they all have different onset and offset positions, and thus different transitional vectors, this is impossible to squeeze into one diagram. Rather, they have normally only been represented as either eight isolated diagrams or as grouped into particular types. Look at these typically static, non-dynamic and non-interactive and black and white presentations of just three of the eight diphthongs. An example we used in our 2012 book to show the disadvantage of traditional representations. In a digital format, as presented here, however, we have more flexibility and can develop an interactive tool that not only represents all eight diphthongal onsets, but at the same time allows the retrieval of all transitions, including written representations via mouse click. And on top of that, you can also listen to an audio example. By Now Boy Now, sound, as we have just seen, or should I say heard, is a central argument in defining the benefit of digital content. Languages can be heard via mouse click, as in our language index, where languages can be zoomed in and several options, from simple sound retrieval to complex stories, are easily available. Das Buch Das hat große Buch Der Mann schläft or take dialects such as these variants of some Germanic languages where keywords can be compared across speakers. Der Drochtgrad Book. Der Drochtgrad Book. Or look at the representation of a sonnet written by William Shakespeare, which traditionally would be presented in a written form. In a multimedia format, we cannot only listen to it read in original pronunciation, but can also dynamically show all important rhythmic aspects via highlighting. All this is impossible using traditional formats. Just watch and listen. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Though art more lovely and more temperate, rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lays hath all too short a date. 
some tame too hot, the A of heaven shades, and often is his gold complexion dim. I'm sure you share my opinion that my examples have no reasonable equivalence in traditional formats. But is it just sound and interactivity that justifies multimedia? No, not necessarily. Often diagrams paired with motion effects and information retrieval via rollover are reasonable alternatives to traditional representations that are basically static and non-interactive. Look at this example, where animated arrows and rollover effects contribute to the dynamicness of the model. These are just some examples that illustrate the effects that can be created using multimedia instead of traditional formats. However, production is not simple. On the Virtual Linguistics Campus, it took us more than 15 years to develop our several thousands of multimedia elements. A lot of work indeed. But what then is the benefit of all this if it involves so much developmental effort and keeps a huge team busy almost around the clock? Is it worth all the effort? Is the digital content superior to traditional ways of content delivery? For me, the answer clearly and definitely is yes. We have learned through the years that the key factor for the success of digital teaching and learning scenarios is by and large dependent on the quality of the digital content. And the development of high quality content needs investment, time, manpower and money. So I hope that the examples I discussed, and I confined myself to just a handful of them, that these examples convinced you that once produced and ready for use, it is the digital content itself that is the major benefit of digitization. And remember, in this video, I confined myself to multimedia. But there's a lot more to say about digital content. So stay tuned until then and have a nice time.